Hello everybody, welcome to The Daily Sip. My name is Oliver and my mission is to make you excited about organic Japanese green tea and today we'll be gonna talk about is the abundant green tea, also called Yutaka Midori. Yutaka Midori is a type of green tea and this type of green tea is especially known in the south of Japan around the region of Kagoshima, which is the biggest city on the island of Kyushu. So uh, what some of you might know that we have visited along uh, the south and uh, we are often in the south because this is a region I personally also like uh, teas or the teas from this, this region and this time we have found a very good tea of one of the uh, widest spread cultivars in the south which is the Yutaka Midori. Some people say that it is or it accounts for one third of all the yield in the region of Kagoshima is made from Yutaka Midori. So I said to myself, I want to dive into a little bit more into the world and I found here a tea which I personally think is quite a good representative for this uh, cultivar. And today I am gonna go and dive a little bit into the this cultivar. So let's have a first look or let's have some first information about this one here. So Yutaka Midori is an early budding cultivar. So we talk about here um, that the in comparison to the most famous cultivar, which is the Yabukita. So it said around 17 to 80 percent of all the yield of uh, Japanese green tea is coming from Yabukita, a very frost resistance and very um, big yield are coming from the Yabukita. The Yutaka Midori is actually early budding, so around five days earlier than the Yabukita. But the main disadvantage of the Yutaka Midori, especially from the farmers in the north, so in the region of Shizuoka, it is a non-frost resistant or much less frost resistant than the Yabukita. So it is a, a cultivar which is widespread in the south because there you have mild climate, you have mild winters. So this one here has actually no problem to grow in this region. And what is nice about for the farmers in the south, it is even or it even gives a bigger yield than the Yabukita. So for them, it is a very well accepted and a very a welcomed cultivar because it is actually giving a lot of tea per meter of planting green tea. But um, what is special or what is special about the Yuta Kamidori is that it is or some people say that is actually one of the best Fukamushi sencha. So Yuta Kamidori is a Fukamushi which gives a lot of sweet a nice nice taste a, bit, a broad complexity and it is quite rich and full-bodied and this is also why this tea is also welcomed by the tea drinkers in Japan so they like this tea a lot thanks to the taste complexity of the tea. So um, when we dive a little bit more into the Yuta Kamidori it is not an absolute official um, cultivar you might say so it is or it has been registered in the region of Kagoshima in 1966 but um, it is not a kind of a, an official cultivar in Japan, but it is really kind of winning its way um, or it kind of won its way in the last 50 years thanks to its beautiful taste, especially when the deep steaming, uh, deep steaming method is applied. Deep steaming, some of you might know, just as a short recap, deep steaming means that the harvest, so when they harvest the tea, to keep it green, to keep it, to, to, not to get it into a black tea, you need to steam the tea at around 95 to 100 degrees Celsius, just uh, to keep or uh, to kill the enzymes, which then turn the tea to a black tea and to keep it green. And there um, you have different steeping methods, steaming methods. One is the asamushi, so short steaming, futsumushi, it's like normal steaming, and then you have the Fukamushi, which, which is the deep steaming. And this one here is a deep steaming tea. And especially the Yuta Kamidori, it is said that it uh, kind of develops the most beautiful flavor when it is longer steamed. So when the Fukamushi or deep steaming method is applied. And um, as it is a uh, uh, Fukamushi, you can see that this tea here has a kind of a mix of a little bit of longer needles, but also with shorter and smaller needles coming from the Fukamushi deep seaming method. 
because there you actually break or kind of soften down the tea or the cells of the tea leaves and what happens is when you roll them they break a little bit easier giving a mix kind of very small particles of very small leaves and also bigger leaves leading then to a beautiful green color of this tea when you brew it and this is exactly what I will do today with this tea. So let's dive directly into this tea and let's have a look what we're gonna have. So I brought along five grams of the tea so you can see also again from the close-up from the front so a very beautiful tea which is mixed of needles longer needles and also quite small particles. We take around five grams. Then we preheated the water to six degrees Celsius, 140 Fahrenheit. And what is nice about the Fukamushi is that you don't have to steep it for a long time. Around 45 seconds is the time you have to need. And then you're gonna dive or we're gonna dive directly into the taste of this tea. So this is a tea also we um, we uh, discovered in our last tea trip. So when Will and Agnese they went to uh, the south of Japan they traveled around and they were also or they could get to know the Kazugan fa family and this is the family actually two uh, person family um, farm with some helpers but mainly two person the husband and the wife and they're actually um, doing their tea and they're specializing mainly in Fukamushi so they have a very broad and very deep knowledge also about the Fukamushi method and uh, that's why we were tasting some teas of them and this one here absolutely convinced us thanks to its very beautiful and very fruity also and sweet flavor but this I gonna discover from a new now with the first tasting. So what is important and what I took brought with me today is actually a Kyusu which has a filter all around. So I'm going to show it to you. So you can see here the tea, beautiful, but I have here this sifter which goes, so the net, the metal net really goes around. This is quite important. So if you have only the front sifter, it might be that with the Fukamushi you clock the tea a little bit. So this is quite a good uh, Kyusu which I can use for this tea and um, that's what I also suggest to you. If you're going into the world a little bit of Fukamushi over time it's always a good idea to just have, um, have a Kyusu which actually goes around even totally around or just uh, kind of at least 180 degrees it's covered. It covers like this you allow the water easier to get out and a little bit go around the leaves as soon as you try to get the tea or the liquid out of your kyusu. This gives this so after 45 seconds you can see normally uh, kind of the green tea or the fukamushi has quite a bright first steeping and as soon as you go then in the second one then you have the color which gets really really intense. So let's have a first like sip of this but first I want to smell just the leaves. So I got a lot of ooh wow. I even get a little bit of sunflower but normally I have like this sunflower seed but here a little bit uh, more of the smell of a nice fresh blooming sunflower. So a little bit of a flowery Mm, I nearly got a little bit of a kind of a the banana peel as well. So it's very going into this fruity direction, but let's see how this first steeping tastes like. Very, very fruity, very beautiful, rich, full bodied flavor. But I got a lot, a lot of sweetness. It's kind of a mix of a sweet fruit, like maybe you notice small, the small bananas when you, you when you eat this, eat them very, very ripe. It, it just have a slight sweetness of this. It also has a little bit of florally kind of undertone. 
And there's a slight kind of a little bit of a savoriness to the tea, but very, very slight. And a little bit kind of a, of a sweet, slight artichoke note. Mm. But strongly on the sweetness, strongly kind of of a full body, that, but it's not so kind of dense like a Gyokuro. So there's not this kind of intense umami, savory flavor, but there's a kind of a light savoriness to it, kind of uh, mixing very well with this fruity and a little bit the florally tones. But now let's go to the very interesting second. This is, in my opinion, kind of the most interesting steeping of the Fukumushi here. Make it very short. And now let's go into the deep green. And you can really see how beautiful this color now evolves. Second steeping is the most colorful steeping of the Fukamushi, and you can see it clearly here. So, color is just very, very intense, very beautiful, and um, just Fukamushi, and only Fukamushi is able to do that. Mm. Still very fruity, no astringency coming up, also thanks to the lower temperature water which I'm using. So 6 degrees 140 Fahrenheit is perfect. And this, it really stays between this kind of florally and fruitiness, but it has a slight kick of grassiness now, a little bit more of a vegetal taste coming in, but still stays very smooth around this sweet and floral notes. Mm -hmm. Mm. I really got now this sweet small banana flavor. Mm. I really, really like it. Um, kind of, I never had this with a tea until now, so it's re, it's kind of this, this kind of little sweetness of a very ripe, small kind of uh, little banana. I don't even know how they are called. Um, I know my grand, grand, great grandmother. She was a huge fan of them. And it really stays like very, very balanced. No bitterness coming out. A little bit of a, of a fresher tone. Like normally kind of a, when astringency is kind of uh, announcing itself, there's first this fresher tones. And I got a little bit of this fresh tone, a little bit of a citrusy note, but very slight. Still, the, the most dominant flavor profile is definitely kind of this round fruitiness with a little bit of a florally tone, but I get a kind of a, a freshness now in my palate. Mm. I definitely have to give a third one here. So this one here, very beautiful in its green. Show you again. You see the very beautiful color of this green tea. Mm -hmm. mm. Stays on a very similar level than the second one. The sweetness and the kind of fruitiness goes a little bit down, leaving a little bit more space for this grassiness, but it doesn't get astringent at all. So the freshness stays, but it doesn't get stronger. Mm -hmm. Feels like the floral notes a little bit come out a little bit more. So it seems to kind of turn like from a first very fruity flavor profile, a nice kind of more dominant on the fruity side with a little bit of a hint of a florally side. Then in the second brewing you have a little bit kind of balancing out between the floral and the fruitiness 
then you have a little bit of a grassiness coming in with a fresher kind of a slight citrusy note and in the third one you have the florally note taking over the sweetness is a little bit going down and also kind of the freshness of the tea stays really strong so absolutely from the first to the third a very very good tea not fading in, in taste which is also very important because these are the smaller leaves some fukamushis they can to fade a little bit stronger in the end in the third brewing but here you can i think even go to a fourth or even a fifth so a tea of uh, very good quality and it's just beautifully very rich in sweetness and kind of on, the, on a lightness of the tea itself without being too too savory which is for the people out there who don't like too much the savoriness of the gyokuro it could be a very very beautiful tea for them good so i hope you like this one here small introduction in yuta kamidori and maybe you just try it out for yourself see if this is a tea you might like and uh, yeah if you ever have a question i'll be more than happy to answer them please shoot any question you would like me to answer thanks a lot have a great, great day and see you and bye bye